Hey guys, Mike Tierney here with Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. It's all about sump pumps today. So you're looking for a sump pump. We want to make sure that you get the right one and with all the options that are out there. Now at Princess Auto you're going to come in and you're going to see various boxes with various pumps and lots to choose from. We want to make sure that you're selecting that pump for the application that's going to best suit. So when you're looking at the, uh, the selection that we have, you'll see that you know it's a quarter horse, half horse, and, and three quarter horse, all different size of, uh, of power that you're going to you know, use. But they're also rated for their flow. So because the pump is in the water, it's only going to have a discharge. It's not going to have a lift. It's only just going to have a discharge um, side of the pump, which we rate in head. So head is the distance in feet that a pump will move out of, uh, water out of itself. So it's important that when you're looking at the specs on the box um, to initially say, okay, that looks like the one I want, but there's more to it. So down in the, the, you know, the, the, the specifications, it says half horse. Down below, it's gonna have uh, pumps up to, in this case, 3,200 gallons per hour. Okay, and then it will have possibly distance as a max head. So in this case, it's a max head of 22 feet. So down there is where the distance this pump, in this specific pump, can move that water out of itself. Now, when they rate the flow, that can be a little deceiving. This is the pump rating at typically either right at the pump outlet, so down here, or at a beginning distance. So to, in order to see that, you need to flip the box around. Quite often there's a chart on the box, whether it's on the side or on the back of the box, to really see what this pump can do for your application and the distances and the flow ratings that are associated to that. So we're just gonna flip the box around here and have a look at the chart. So in this case, the chart shows us that we have liters per hour and gallons per hour at a certain flow rate and at the distance that that pump will move. So in, uh, you know, an example would be the full flow of the pump being at 3,200 gallons per hour, that's rated at five feet. Now, if we're going further than that, so in this case, the maximum discharge of this pump is 22, we're down to about 1,000 gallons per hour. That's a substantial difference, and in some cases, we may think that the pump is not doing what it's supposed to. And you, you just gotta make sure that that pump limitation is based on distance in relation to flow. So it's really important to check out the charts, not just what's on the front of the box, for that, in, that extra information. Now we've got lots of varieties of pumps. So we've got two pumps here. Uh, we can compare them. They're comparable. They're both a half horse in this case, but they are slightly different in design. It doesn't mean one is better than the other. It just gives the, you as a customer an option depending on the application you're actually using it in. So typically sump pumps are used to remove groundwater, whether you've got a sump pit in the basement, whether it's uh, maybe a, you know, a window well or an area where you're capturing water that you want to maneuver out away and prevent any kind of you know, moisture buildup or flooding in your, say, your basement. Um, these are not going to prevent large amounts of, of, uh, of water coming in in you know, major flooding situations, but they do move that water, that groundwater that's around your buildings. So you have two options in a lot of cases. Uh, many designs, you know, they could be plastic, they could be stainless steel in, in structure, but they typically will be a float and rod style. So when we look at the float and rod, um, it's a fixed float uh, that will move up on a rod that will come into contact with a micro switch. Once the water drains down, it turns the pump off. Other applications, um, like such as this one, has a, a, a tether. So it uses a tether on a cable that you can adjust. 
So this one's more adjustable. So you can change the depth level that your pump will kick on or kick off. So this is a good option if you've got a larger space. So if this is in a really small, tight sump pit, the tether may not be able to move up or down and may catch on the side of that sump, um, the wall of that sump pit. This would be a better option when it comes to smaller, tighter spaces. So you don't have anything mechanical moving up and down. All it is is moving up and down on the rod. But for spaces that have larger areas and you, know, you want a little bit more depth control, the tether is another option. One isn't any better, it's just whatever your application is uh, best suited for. So how do we get them going? So basically they're really simple. We've got to make sure that we're plumbing them in. So we can use, um, you know, typically in a, a household structure, we're using hardline uh, plastic PVC or ABS piping um, that would come out of our sump pit across the floor, up the wall, and then outside uh, where you would attach a hose, a flexible hose. Um, if it's a window well, we can just plunk it into the window well and um, you know, watch it that way. If it's a pool or something you're draining, you don't want these things running too long, but you want to make sure that you know, they're, uh, they're working properly. So um, basically all you're going to do is make sure that you plug them into you know, an outlet that is you know, uh, not submerged underwater, obviously, but you want to make sure that it's a dry outlet. Um, a GFI outlet is best, but uh, not all applications will have that. So you want to make sure that you plug that in. Um, this, this specific unit also has a, a plug for the tether. So the tether the float has a plug that we would simply just plug our pump into. And then we would plug this into the wall outlet. Certain pumps have this all built together. This is just one model that we're talking about. This model here also has um, a plug system. So it is a two prong plug system. And you would just simply plug that in. And then that would go into your, your wall outlet. But not as flexible when it comes to changing the height level that the pump will kick on or turn off. You want to make sure that these are submersed in the water as they're running. You don't want them to run too long without that water cooling the pumps. Uh, they will burn out uh, in, in very quickly if, uh, if they've run too long and um, you will have to replace that. So what are some of the accessories? So there's not a lot of accessories, but there are some key ones. Obviously, we want to talk about, you know, hoses. So if you're just using a flex hose right out of the pump, we carry kits that are uh, you know, 20 feet, 30 feet. You can actually cut them if you want. They're super easy to trim. They do come with uh, a fitting inside the case with a hose clamp. And uh, basically, you're just going to clamp that right onto your, your fitting that's going to go into the, uh, the pump. Um, this can be stretched out, and it can uh, you know, be moved. It's more portable. If you're using a household, you're going to again use ABS pipe and that's going to be more solid fixtures. Now, if it's in a sump pit, um, you know, a really good accessory to have is what we call an inline check valve. So an inline check valve allows fluid to move through one way, but not back the other. So as this pump turns on, it's going to move that water away from itself. But as it turns off, any water that's going to be, say, in a vertical position, it's actually going to want to come back down into the sump pit. Gravity's going to take over. Well, if you have enough distance that that, that, that fluid's sitting in and that enough pipe, that actually might be enough fluid for once it drains back to actually kick that pump back on. Then it drains it out, turns off, kicks back on when it all comes back down. So you get a cycling effect. And to help prevent that, you can use an inline check valve. So anything from between where you install it to the pump, you're not going to have that water draining back down. So it takes the load off the pump to start up. So the next accessory is hose clamps. Uh, you can never have enough hose clamps. You want to make sure that uh, all your fittings are you know, tight, connections to the hoses 
are uh, nice and tight. You want to prevent any leakage, especially if you're using it, you know, in a house that you're, you know, you're going to be dragging this in and out of, or, you know, in a window well where you're going to be bringing water in um, that, you know, could damage surfaces that that water is going to drain out onto. So hose clamps, really important component. Some tips and tricks. Uh, basically, you know, when you shut these down for the, the season, um, depending if they're in a sump pit or if you're just using them out and about in the yard site, um, if you're using them in the yard site, just make sure that you, uh, you know, you clean out anything that might have been uh, drawn into the bottom of the, of the, uh, the pump. Um, they always draw at the bottom. Um, there is a uh, screening, but, you know, twigs and branches and stuff, debris can get stuck in there and you know it can dry out and then over the winter um, you know you, you, you put it away you pull it out and all of a sudden now something's jammed in there so it's really simple you just take off the uh, um, you know the screws you can remove the bottom plate and you can have access to the uh, the impeller area and just clean that out it's a great um, now's a great opportunity that you can spray the shaft coming out of the motor down through the motor um, to that impeller with some lubricant um, over the the winter uh, the shaft may get a little rusty the seals might become a little bit hardened and uh, that can cause your um, you know your pump to actually seize uh, throughout storage so spraying it with a little bit of lubricant kind of making sure that it's going to work in the uh, the spring and i would do it again in the spring before you start using it if you're going to spray lubricant do not use these pumps for, um, say, getting a pond ready if you're going to have, uh, you know, fish or aqualife in there because that lubricant will, uh, you know, contaminate that water. So, um, but if it's just, you know, flooding a little bit of water or ground, surface ground water, whatever that might be, then that's not going to be a, an issue. Do not use these pumps, though, for pond applications. Um, sometimes we go and search for a, you know, a lower cost version of a pond pump sump pumps seem to fit the bill make sure that you don't use sump pumps for pond applications um, a they're not designed to run continuously they're an on off intermittent type um, system and b they do not have completely sealed components so there is the chance that some of the oils that are lubricated and the greases can escape and that may um, um, you know damage your you know your pond but also may uh, you know, ultimately injure fish or aqualife. So do not use sump pumps for pond applications, but for moving you know, water and uh, you know, groundwater and that kind of stuff. Well, that's it. Thanks for tuning in to Tech Tips with Mike T. See you next time.